Hi everyone, we're going to create a accented tutu dress with feathers. Now there's the full length feather videos available to you, especially if it's your first time, please check them out. Uh, this one is basically, I created it, I really enjoyed making it and loved how it turned out. So I wanted to share it with you. Now with this one, we're just putting the feathers on the back of the tutu dress. There's a good reason for that. If you are creating this for a little one that has sensitive skin, this feathering that we have placed doesn't even really touch the skin at all. So that's a plus. And the other thing is it's cost effective and it's lighter weight. Because when you're doing a tutu, you've got your tool that you place first and then you put the feathers throughout and it gets kind of heavy. So this is an alternate method, but you still get to use the real cute feathers. And we only had to use one boa and each strip that we used of feathers was approximately 13 inches in length. Now our tool is between 10 and 12 inches in the pixie style. So those feathers really stand out in the back quite well. So let's do a quick rundown of the supplies that you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need your boa, which for us, we use the 60 gram weight. Remember the gram weight is basically telling you how thick and how full that boa is when you're creating something with these, especially in strips. You need less when you have a full boa. You need your tutu skirt or dress. Usually you're gonna wanna use a darker tool on the bottom because the color from the feathers can bleed. Feathered boas, it is normal for them to obviously be dyed. They dye it, it's a normal process, but it can bleed if it gets wet or there's a lot of sweat. If you're using bright colors for the feathers, I would suggest going with a darker tool color. Now, as you see here, we have the light pink shimmering tool as our base and light pink, just a touch darker than the tool on the feathers. So even if it bleeds, it's really not gonna show that bad. But again, if you're gonna create something with darker colors, remember to use a darker tool on the bottom. That way you don't have to worry about any problems. You're gonna want to have quite a bit of hot glue sticks. You can use the all-purpose or the fabric style glue sticks. Some embellishments if you wanna add a little bit more security to those feather strips staying on there. Your trusty scissors and that's it. Unfortunately, I keep covering when I put my feather strip on as I'm making this video. So I truly apologize for that. It's just, it gets so hot when you're working with that hot glue, be careful you don't burn yourself. Because remember, you're working with feathers and then you're working with tool that has holes so you can easily burn yourself. So I apologize for the bad angling in this video. So what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna pick where you want those feather strips to go. After you've sectioned out where you want it, you can use those alligator clips that don't have teeth to make it easier for you, or you can just kind of use your fingers and move it out the way. Biggest thing that you wanna look out for is don't let that glue saturate through all your layers of tool because that gets messy and then it clumps together and it's hard to pull apart if not impossible, without damaging the tool. Now, when you're getting ready to place that feather strip, take a good look at your strip. And whichever side has more long pieces, has longer pieces of the feathers hanging down, flip that and have that be your bottom. So then you've got that flowing, scattered look and it just really sets off your creation and it's easier to work with and it's not poking through the child that's wearing it on that crocheted top or crocheted band that you're using. Place a dab of glue. Remember, less is more because you can always go back and add without having to worry about all that glue saturating, sliding down, and it not drying on you properly. This way, if you add just a dab of glue, situate it on your tool spot, let it dry for a moment while you're doing the next piece, next section, 
And then you go back and you say, okay, I've wiggled it, I've moved it, it needs more adhesiveness. Then you can add a little bit more. This just takes away from all the extra cleanup and mess that you could deal with when you add too much glue at a time. And it also eliminates long periods of drying time. Here is the tricky part. When you're placing it on your tool, you're going to go a little bit down from the tool knot if you want, or you can do it right on the tool knot. If you do it right on the tool knot, it kind of allows you to press firmly with less problems in burning yourself. Or you can buy those little finger gloves that they have out there. I believe Amazon has them, and they work really well. Just make sure that you get some that aren't going to be too big for your fingers. If you do it right below the tool knot, just be careful as you're pressing firmly. Kind of just get it to press, you know, where it saturates with tool and feather spot, and then let go so you don't burn yourself. You can always go back and add more glue. You'll do that throughout and just go from section to section. Let it dry some. Now, as my added security blanket, so to speak, we're going to add some oversized rhinestones at the top and we're going to attach it to both feather and tool. So you're going to add a dab of glue again and then you're going to press really firmly making sure that everything is going through. You know that glue's going through the feathers, the tool and it's still on the rhinestone. Do all of these, let them dry and again just double check, wiggle it, jiggle it, move it around and if you see that everything is staying the way that you like it, especially for the age group you're creating this for. You know, sometimes you need a little extra adhesiveness when you're dealing with, you know, toddlers that are very active. Once you've decided that this is just the way that you want it, you're done. One quick thing I forgot to mention, before you start working, and I apologize, this is at the end, go outside with your feather boas and shake them out because they will have excess feathers and you will have a big mess. I have had to sweep about five times in this short video. So I had to stop and sweep, stop and sweep. So avoid all that hassle, go outside, shake it out and then come back in. You'll still have some feathers falling, but nothing compared to just popping it out of the package and seeing all the mess. Thank you all so much for liking, sharing and subscribing. You have no idea how much it means to me that you take the time out of your busy schedule to watch my videos. Quick, quick side note. If you have any holiday themes that you'd like us to create some videos about, please send a message on our Facebook page, Naomi Inspired, or at our email, c.martinez, M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z, at the number two, T-U-Q-T, C-U-T-E, dot com. That's c.martinez at 22cute.com. And we will see if we can get some of your ideas turned into videos. You have a fabulous grand day. From my family to yours, happy creating.